along the same lines of baptism, why, say, Pastor Burson, why do I have to get baptized? So, I mean, I see that people get baptized, but is it really that important? Well, in the New Testament, people are commanded to be baptized. We are commanded to be baptized as a believer. Amen. We do not get baptized for salvation. Okay, that doesn't save you. But what it does is it symbolizes your faith. It symbolizes your belief. It shows the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ when you go down into the water and you're, you're buried, as it were, when you're dunked under the water. It's symbolizing the burial and the death of Jesus Christ. And when you come back up out of the water, it symbolizes the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's what you're putting your faith in. And you are showing that publicly that that's where my faith is. And you get baptized in the water. But not only is it symbolic of what you believe, it's commanded. It is something that if you do not do, you are in disobedience to God. And it's something that you ought to do after you believe. Acts 10, verse 47, the Bible reads, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So we see here people being commanded to be baptized. He says, I can, okay, baptize those people. They got saved, they got the Holy Ghost, baptize them. And notice here, because there are many false doctrines out there, I don't want to get into all of them. And we're going to flip over to Acts chapter 2 next. But it says here, they've already received the Holy Ghost, and then he baptizes them. Okay, don't be deceived by the Pentecostals that are going to tell you, oh no, you need to be baptized in order to receive the Holy Ghost. And we're actually going to turn to Acts chapter 2 right now, that where they get that, that understanding from in Scripture, their misunderstanding from in Scripture, comes from Acts chapter 2. We're going to look at Acts chapter 2. But in Acts chapter 10, they already received the Holy Ghost. Why? Because they got saved. Because they put their faith in Jesus Christ. Because they were born again, they received the Holy Ghost the moment they got saved. And then they got baptized. The baptism doesn't bring the Holy Ghost. But what baptism is, is a, is a um, step of obedience because it's a commandment in the New Testament to get baptized. Look at Acts chapter 2. We're going to start reading in verse number 31. Verse number 31, we're seeing the Apostle Peter, he's, he's, he's preaching here and rebuking. And uh, he quotes this passage from Psalms that talks about Jesus Christ and his resurrection. He explains it here in verse number 31. It says, He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the Bible says that his soul went to hell. He bare the sins of the whole world. And guess what? He brought those sins with him to hell and, and suffered and died and, and paid for our sins. He went to hell, but... He didn't stay in hell, as is being explained here. Uh, his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Be, why? Because he's resurrected. So when he speaks of the resurrection of Christ, he speaks at the fact that his soul wasn't left in hell. So at the resurrection is when his soul came up out of hell. So he's preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Guess what? That's the gospel. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus Christ bare our sins on the cross died, rose again from the dead. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That's what we need to trust in, that Jesus did all of that for us. So this is what Peter's preaching in verse number th uh, 32. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he's preaching to people that were participants of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. There are people that are like, you know, they're hearing this and they finally are hearing Jesus Christ rose again from the dead and we put him to death. 
And it says, now when they heard this, verse 37, they were pricked in their heart. It bothered them. And it should have bothered them. They're pricked in the heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I said, well, what do we do? But we didn't know. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Okay? This is a great verse. I love this verse. Unfortunately, it's just misinterpreted and misused way too often among the Pentecostals. Now, that word repent, and again, I can't get too deep into this. I'm already running overtime on where I wanted to be. That word repent means you just change your mind. You change what you believe. They, need, they weren't believing in Jesus Christ. You know what they need to do? They need to believe in Jesus Christ. That's the repentance that they needed. They're not believing in Jesus. What do we do? Believe in Jesus. That's step number one. Get saved. Change what you believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Step number one. Step number two, he says, and be baptized. Right? Believe first. Change your mind. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and then be baptized. That's what you should do. You want to know what you should do? Repent. Change your mind. Believe in Jesus. Be baptized. That's the order that Peter put it in right there. Get saved. Get baptized. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Now, the reason why it says for the remission of sins, of, for being baptized for the remission of sins, it's because of. You're baptized because of the remission of your sins, because your sins have been paid for, because your sins have been forgiven. That's why you should be baptized. You're not baptized in order to be saved. They're two different things. Just like the, you, know, you see a wanted sign, wanted for murder. People are wanted because of murder. So when it says for murder, it's not, it's, not, it's not an advertisement looking to hire a murderer. It's a, it's a poster wanted for murder because, hey, this guy committed murder. Because of that, he's wanted. So because our sins have been remitted, because they've been paid for, because that's been done, we get baptized. 